easy is it when you're an inmate to find an excuse to get out when you're all locked up? And for that, I turn to Paul Wright. He spent 17 years behind bars in Washington state for murder and is now the executive director of the Human Rights Defense Center. I'm so glad you're here. Um, when I heard about Sean Williams headed to the hospital uh, for having apparently tried to take his own life, I wondered if it was just an effort to get to an easier place to escape from. From the inside, does that make sense to you? Sure. I mean, I, I think that's one of the things people try to escape, try to escape from, well, places that are easier to escape from. And typically, detention facilities are usually a lot harder to escape from just because of the security measures, the staffing, and everything else. But I also don't think we should discount the fact that, um, you know, suicide is a very real problem in American prisons and jails. Uh, mental health treatment is um, ranges from terrible to non-existent to barely adequate. And I think that someone in his position could very well be despondent uh, over both the charges they're facing. And I'd say probably from his perspective, uh, without knowing the details of the charges against him or the evidence against him, but just based on the charges alone, I think there's probably a very real possibility that he's facing the prospect of, uh, if not, you probably won't get life without parole because it does not like he's killed anyone, but certainly the, he's facing the prospect of spending the rest of his life in prison. And people often decide, sometimes decide that, you know, they'd rather die than uh, than do that. And, yeah. and like I say, self, that, self harm is a very real problem in American prisons and jails. And that makes sense to me. That makes sense to me. But for the fact that he's so elusive and he's tried so many times to escape, he's not even sure. facing the charges yet for the 52 alleged rapes. It's just a discussion at this point. They're still sort of collating all, all the evidence on that. I do want to ask you this, Paul. What are some of the other excuses that an inmate could make to get off property? Like, it's not just medical, right? There's got to be other ways they can say they have a, a need to not be there. Uh, typically, I, it's, I think it's important to note that it's the police and uh, jail and prison officials that run the detention facilities. You know, the prisoners are just going to say, hey, I feel like going uh, down to Kmart or Walmart or whatever, and I don't like it here. At the end of the day, it's the it's um, law enforcement that are making those decisions. Um, a lot of times, I mean, some of the more common ones range from, um, you know, that they're cooperating with the police in investigations and they need to be taken outside, uh, outside the detention facility to show the police crime sites or crime scenes or, or whatever. And, you know, this also comes up in the context of, you know, informants and such that are cooperating with police and, you know, it's kind of a reward that are, you know, like, hey, let's go to Burger King uh, and they're going to fast food restaurants and, and things like that. That's actually that somewhat common That makes sense, actually, yeah. Cooperating well. witnesses often do do the go-sees and the, and the show-and-tells. But So we had a little list up there, and it had work detail and transport duty on it as well. I often wonder when I see, you know, inmates on the side of the road doing work detail, cleaning up the side of the road, you know, I, I kind of wonder, well, how do they get that uh, privilege? Because I would think it's a privilege to get out you know, to be able to be in the great outdoors like that, but you got to be, you got to be real trustworthy. Yeah, as a general rule, the prisoners that are on these outside work details for the most part uh, tend to be prisoners doing short sentences or they haven't been convicted of serious crimes. But on the other hand, that's changed because uh, back in the 90s in Florida, uh, when Charlie Crist, uh, well, he got the name uh, Chain Gang Charlie, and it was his idea to put um, basically violent offenders serving lengthy prison sentences alongside the road, um, doing basically highway cleanup duty and picking up uh, trash and litter and stuff. Uh, supposedly it's a tough on crime uh, measure. And not surprisingly, there was escapes, there were assaults and everything else. And, and that kind of fell by the wayside. So uh, the state of Arizona also tried doing the same thing with uh, death row prisoners. And that lasted for around a year, year and a half, until two people were killed in an escape attempt. So, um, yeah, so there have been a lot, just in recent memory, there have been a lot of attempts, uh, usually by politicians, generally not by the people actually running the detention facilities. But there's been these attempts by um, politicians to, you know, put uh, basically violent offenders serving lengthy sentences outside of um, prison grounds doing these types of work details. And pretty much it goes on along until there's some violent incident, a couple of people die, until and then they decide, well, happens. maybe this wasn't yeah. a good idea. Right, which well, was entirely foreseeable idea, and predictable. But... 
I'd want the prison van job uh, to be the driver. I saw that in Orange is the New Black and thought it'd be the perfect job. Hey, um, so nice of you to do this, Paul Wright. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Look forward to talking to you again. Thank you very much for having me on the show. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.